This is from Chris Tuthill in New York City. Dave, do you think there's any chance you would play with Tull again at some point in the future? Do you Ian, and Ian ever work together or talk about the possibility? Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Chris, um, I, I love playing with Tull, and I, I, I wouldn't say no if if um, if there was any kind of one-off projects or any CDs. Like I, I was involved in the Christmas CD once, and that was good fun. But uh, I, I, I can't see me ever rejoining the band because uh, I, I'm kind of a lot older now, and um, you know, David's a very good bass player too. So um, you know, but certainly by all means, I'd, I'd, I would love to be involved in some. If ever I was asked, I, I wouldn't say no. But I, I can't see myself ever touring with the band again. But one-off projects or reunion gigs or concerts, of course, yeah. Um, we did talk about the possibility once of doing something acoustically, um, Ian and myself. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed the tour that we did with Ian Martin and Dave Maddox and myself. Um, that that was great fun doing things in a really cut down kind of level. That w that was really good fun. Uh, but it the, it never happened. Um, the f the the acoustic possibility of. Um, doing something I don't know what happened there but it, it didn't happen but that would really appeal to me again this is from Paul in New Jersey do you have any plans to play in the US as I mentioned earlier um, has uh, you know it's difficult for us to tour because we can't make it pay Econ we just it's not economically viable the way that we've been touring but you know, hopefully that situation w might change in the future and, and we'd, we'd love to come over. This is from um, from Dave in Gathersburg, Maryland. Tell us about a musical instrument you don't get along with and why. <laughs> well, Dave, um, I like most stringed instruments, but I'm hopeless on the piano. I've, it's it's never really appealed to me playing the piano. And uh, although I had piano lessons when I was at school, um, I, do, I don't really uh, play keyboards at all. Uh, do you still wear Banana Republic clothing? I can't ever remember um, wearing Banana Republic clothing, but <laughs> I'm sure I may have bought something from there. Um, I am 63 years old, but I. I I know that I know the shops, but I can't remember the last time I went in one. Does anybody call you David? Um, not really. Um, my friends tend to call me Peggy. I've always gone by the nickname Peggy. But but both Ian and Martin, uh, when I was in Tull, always called me Dave, and 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 still do. So um, I think the rest of the Tull guys used to call me Dave as well. But Peggy, I'm I'm Peggy to everybody. <laughs> my opinion please regarding the musical talents of Crosby Stills Nash and Young I'm a huge Neil Young fan I think he he can do no wrong for me um I, I just love him and I liked you know Crosby Stills Nash and Young when they were together I thought they they were f a fantastic band they made some some great albums and uh, no I, I don't want a free divinities t-shirt <laughs> thanks Dave um I've got so many t-shirts but uh you know, I, I can't add another one, but thanks for the offer. <laughs> These are from Preston in Manchester, UK. Was the song with no name Aka Andrew Giddings Parrot ever recorded? Sorry, uh, Preston, don't know that. What can I tell Toll fans about the original 20 minutes plus recording of Budapest? And are they in Ian's vault of unreleased works? Um, I really don't know. I, <laughs> I can't remember much about the original 20 minutes version of uh, of Budapest. I, kn I know it was um, recorded at my old studio, Woodworm, or certainly the drum tracks were recorded there. I'm, I'm sure, um, but I can't I can't remember the original 20 minute <laughs> version. <laughs> Whether Ian still got them or not, I don't know. The story about me and the airport and the Lou True. Um, it sounds like it could be true, yeah. I've, I've forgotten the, the actual events. Uh, time has washed these things from my memories, um, from my memory. But um, it sounds like it's a funny story. Maybe you should let me know what it is, Preston. 
Um, Terry Ellis's reaction to Under Wraps wasn't good. I'm afraid he was somewhat over-refreshed uh, when he came to Ian's studio after a day at the races. And um, he was actually very obnoxious and said some awful things. I believe somebody did tamper with his drink, but um, he was too over-refreshed to notice. <laughs> Thanks, Preston. This is from Nurse Susan in Hawaii. When are you coming to Hawaii with Fairport and Toll? I don't know, Susan. I mean, um, we've never been asked. <laughs> we, we did go to Hawaii. We had a week's holiday once in between a tour of America and Australia. Um, and I think we I did play with Toll in Hawaii once. Um, but we only did one gig, I believe. But we had a great time when we had our weeks off a week off and um, I went to Maui and uh, it was wonderful and what was it like to open for Toll as Fairport and then backstage change and become Toll? I answered this question earlier it's um it's it it, it was great fun Susan it was um you know kind of hard work but I only had to play for 45 minutes with the Fairports then a quick 20 minute changeover and uh, go to the other side of the stage and, and do the toll stuff. I mean, it was very hard work, but I explained to, as I explained before, it, the only thing that really suffered was my table tennis playing. T take care. Hi, this is from Jeff in New York. Um, how well do I know Steel Ice Band musicians? Uh, very well, really, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> you said. Um, you say it uh, on their Bedlam Bourne album from 2000, they thank a guy named John Dagnall for his continued efforts in trying to get Dave Pegg to book Steel Eye at Crawfordy. <laughs> That's a bit of a joke, yeah. John's their manager, and we have had them at Crawfordy on a couple of occasions, and we're all Steel Eye Span fans. We're, I think Maddie's a wonderful singer, and Peter Knight's a fantastic musician and a great fiddle player. They were also um, very lucky having Ken Nickel um, play guitar with them for a while, but I think Ken's left now, so uh, I think they're replacing him. And I, I think they should get my friend PJ Wright, who's a, a great electric guitar player. He'd be great with Steel Ice. No, we, we love Steel Ice, but I'm sure they'll be at Crawfordy again sometime. And you say, uh, Jeff, that you used to come and see us at the bottom line a place in New York which is sadly gone you right it was a fabulous venue it was great um, a great venue it was a shame we had to do two sets there that was a problem two shows because uh, it would have been great if you could the fairports were always restic restricted to uh, you know the, the, the set length was only about 75 minutes and then the house would change or you'd get new people in for a second show and 75 minutes again but you couldn't do a different set because uh, some of the people were new um, and the ones that came to both shows got to see the, s the same set twice so um, that was the only kind of disadvantage there um, there was a bar um, which we used to go to afterwards and sometimes uh, and ironically before the gig I know um, once I was uh, very guilty of being somewhat over refreshed and telling the club manager what I thought about him and uh, had to be hustled off the stage by, I think, Mr. Rawcock. Um, and I was very, very drunk and uh, luckily those days are gone, I hope. I mean, I still enjoy a drink, don't get me wrong, but um, try not to insult the audience and the rest of the <laughs> musicians on the stage nowadays. But it was a good club, the bottom line, and uh, some fabulous bands played there. Um, I've I've mentioned several times already it, it's difficult for us to come back to America and um, I don't think it would be Joe's pub if we played in New York because we had some really bad experiences there. It's it's probably okay if you're in the audience but to play on that stage, the stage is so tiny and also the staff uh, treated us like, um, like as if we were, uh, you know, from the third world really. 